Have you found yourself in the middle of selling your house? You packed everything, you're getting ready to go just for your realtor to tell you that the house did not appraise. And now that your buyer that you have under contract is expecting you to reduce the price of your house. Isn't that a pain in the butt? Yes, it is. Today, I'm going to show you how you can appeal a low appraisal while selling your home. So let's just get right in. Hey everybody, it's Robert here. I'm a member of the Eric Stewart Group of Long and Foster Realtors here in Rockville, Maryland. I hope you're doing great. So today I'm gonna to be talking about the biggest nightmare a seller can have is to be almost halfway through the process just to find out that the house did not appraise. So today I'm gonna to give you some tips on how you can overcome a low appraisal in the process of selling your home. And please like and subscribe my channel. So. Let's take a look at what is it that we can do as sellers. Remember, you hire a real estate agent to help you sell your home. It is the obligation of your realtor to bring you all the comparables, not in your subdivision, but also in your zip code and all around your area it can potentially be up to a mile around it just to have an idea what it has been selling. And don't limit yourself to only the last six months. I will go up to a year because... If you have a unique house, you have to go outside your neighborhood and you have to go outside the time frame, time limit many appraisers use when producing this kind of report. So let's take a look at the things that you could be doing to ensure yourself how you can overcome a low appraisal. Number one, understand the appraisal report, the residential appraisal report. So having a low appraisal it's a pain we already understand we know that so understanding the the process is key to fighting a low appraisal when selling your house so that's something that you definitely have to have a, a, an understanding a residential appraisal is a process by which an appraiser provides an estimation analysis of your property it's like an opinion it's going to a on to like a doctor and doctor giving you an opinion of something to arrive at this number, uh, they take in consideration many factors, such as the location of the property, any amenities within the location, recent sales, trends in the neighborhood, comparison to similar properties that have sold in the same area, income potential for rental properties, and other unique features that may affect the home's value. So what it means is they go at a micro level and they go at a micro level, micro and macro, big, small, right? One of the things a lot of people, when I come to meet with a potential seller, that is like, well, my estimate, my Zillow estimate, or my Redfin estimate says the house is worth this much. Nothing wrong with that, but the only problem is that they don't take in consideration the beautiful flooring, heated flooring you put in the master bathroom remodeling that you did last year that it cost you an arm and a leg, right? You want those things to be taken in consideration. Algorithms don't take that into consideration. They take a square footage, of course, land size, schools, uh, neighborhood amenities, city amenities, transportation, and they come up with a number which is, in my opinion, has never been an accurate number, nor is a perfect number to dictate the value of your home. So with that in mind, just think about it. now you have a, a, a understanding that where you're standing right now of in terms of your grounds, what do you need to be doing in order to fight a potential uh, appraisal issue? So let's go to the step number two, okay? which is review the appraisal report. Right here, I wanna show you a sample of a residential appraisal report. That's right here. It's many pages of information right here that you can go through it. And an appraiser um, that is has to have a license, certified appraiser, that it is hired by the lender that the buyer it is working with, it's using, it's the one that is gonna come out and take a look at your property. So the first step in fighting it, fighting this is to understand the low appraisal and is to review the report. So you have to take in consideration uh, all the details, look at any errors in terms of your property, a square footage, the land size, number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, 
number of levels, all those errors that potentially were missed by an appraiser. Remember, there are many times when an appraiser will come to the property, and this is a four-level split property or four a split level with four levels, and they only look at three levels, and they didn't know that there was another level. So it's important that your listing agent that represents you as the seller uh, it makes himself or herself available to come out there and take a look with the appraiser and bring the comparables that he or she used to price your property, as well as any list of improvements. We'll go, we'll talk about that later. Okay. Uh, check all the relevant data in the appraisal report. As I said, there is a lot of information that he goes into these reports, lots of it, tons of information that you have to do. Once you have take a look at the report, then you know what you are up against it. So now you have to look at where are the errors? Uh, is this ultimate a problem where they are missing square footage? They're missing upgrades. They're missing um, other amenities in the house, in the neighborhood. You have to take a look at those things. Okay, so now let's take a look at comparables. Okay, that's very important. So now we have to show com show comparables. Provide comparable sales. What he means is if you feel that the appraiser has undervalued your property, you got to go and provide other comparables in the neighborhood that you can find yourself using tools online or you can have your realtor or you and your realtor can get together or ultimate on a Zoom call to review every comparable in the neighborhood, in your area. This can help uh, the appraiser come up with a different value. And sometimes it's important to show other properties that have less amenities, that sold for less money, so that that can give a boost in the price. Also, it's a good idea that if, in a, it's, if a property is a little bit questionable in terms of the number of pictures they put online and you have no idea, your listing agent should be able to call that listing agent that sold that property and find out what amenities that house had that maybe you don't have, or maybe it's you have more of them, okay? So it's very important to understand you're comparing apples to apples, but your apple, it's bigger, better, juicier, and sweeter than the other one. So that's the best thing to do. Okay, this one is a very, very important. Highlight the most recent upgrades you have done to your property. I cannot stress this enough to tell you this is very important to do all the time because an appraiser may not have an idea how much you pay on those countertops, how much you pay on those cabinets, how much you pay on those like light switches, how much you paid on the roof and all these things. So make a list of the recent upgrades you've done to the property. Okay. Just sort it out by timeline. So you say roof back in 2008. Um, it cost me this much. You don't have to be specific on the day and time when it was installed, just the year that it was installed. So roof 2008, $10,000, uh, HVAC system 2009, you know, $10,000, you know, you went up and the extra mile to put a, um, UV light and a whole house humidifier, and you put a, a much nicer filter, highlight all those things that cost you a little bit more, right? In terms of the appliances, you didn't go with your entry level stainless steel appliances that you buy at Home Depot or Lowe's. You went to Brian Scarf and got the high end appliances that rather than the refrigerator costing two thousand, this one costs ten thousand dollars. So highlight those things that you have done. It's very important that you keep a. A, a number of those things in, in an iPad or on a Word document on your computer with each of these upgrades. So that way you can, when the time comes for you to sell, this makes it a lot easier. I personally like to know those upgrades. So I will be sending my seller clients a, an email with a link so they can go and list all these upgrades they have done so that I can include this as a part of the disclosure so that the buyers understand the value of this. Remember, when selling a house to a buyer, there are two people you have to convince, the buyer and the lender. So that's two things that you have to do. If you're still not satisfied with the opinion written in the appraisal report, you have another option. It is to hire a second appraiser. 
you will have to pay for that second appraiser, okay? So you will request the lender to have a second opinion and you are willing to pay for that. Now, when I say you will hire, it's on, on the payment side. Not necessarily you will be calling that appraiser to come out and do the work. It's just that you're going to be responsible for the payment. Otherwise, a buyer, it gets hit with two appraisal reports uh, that they may not want to be paying. And let's be honest, a lower appraisal works on, on the buyer's side, not on the seller's side. So that's the other thing you have to do. And just make sure that as you're hiring this person, that this person has a deep knowledge of the area in which your house it is located, okay? And lastly, appeal the appraisal. If all else fails, you can appeal the appraisal. You'll need to submit a written request to the appraiser or the appraisal management company explaining why you believe the appraisal is incorrect. Be sure to include any supportive documentation such as comparable sales or recent upgrades to strengthen your case. So you see, this is like the last thing you could be doing towards the end of the day. If everything else fails, this is the last thing that you could be doing. Fighting a low appraisal can be a challenge, but with these six steps, or tips, you can make a compelling case for your property's value. Remember, a low appraisal doesn't have to be the end of your selling experience or process. By following these steps, you can help ensure that you'll get a fair appraisal moving forward with selling your home plans. So with that done in mind, just wanted to tell you this is all the things that you should be doing if you're thinking about selling your home and having to deal with a low appraisal. Remember, if you have any questions about anything that I said here, uh, feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is right below, and I'll be more than happy to share this presentation with you. Again, thank you very much for coming to my weekly video. Please like and subscribe so I can continue to put content like these every week to help you educate yourself in the real estate industry. Remember, at the end of the day, this is not about sales pressure, just education. And by the way, if you know someone that is moving into the Maryland and DC, right below, I have the links of my relocation guides. You can download for free. This gives you a very detailed report of what's going on in this area. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.